Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Blair and my husband and I are expecting our first baby, a little girl, any day now. My due date is actually tomorrow at the time of filming, so I don't know when she's coming, but I do know that I am going to post this video after she's already arrived. Um, so if this video is up, she has arrived, which is crazy to think. I'm extremely out of breath being <laughs> just about 40 weeks pregnant. Um, she has, I have struggled with breathlessness my entire pregnancy and as she gets bigger and she still hasn't dropped, it's gotten even worse. So we, our birth plan is to deliver at an out of hospital birth center. In some parts of the country, out of hospital birth centers are extremely common and at some parts of the country they're really uncommon and so depending, and in the world as well. So depending on where you're from, this might be super bizarre and strange to you or this might be something that you've experienced, close friends have experienced, family have experienced, these sorts of things. I have literally probably hundreds of reasons why for me it was the right choice to choose to deliver with midwives at an out of hospital birth center and I respect everyone's decision as a woman on where you know where you want to deliver where you want to have your baby and where you feel the most comfortable with that being said the Packing for a birth center is definitely different than packing for a hospital and um, there are things that I will not bring and I'm not being asked to bring by my midwives to the birth center that I would definitely maybe bring to, I say definitely maybe because I'm not sure I've never had a hospital birth, um, a hospital birth, but that I might bring to the hospital and vice versa. So it's just different um, is kind of the bottom line of it all. And um, one thing I will say though is that we went to a preparing for baby class and got a very extensive packing list through our birth center from the midwives. And I trust that after the thousands of births that they have attended, they know exactly what I need and what I don't need to, um, to give birth and to have the things that I'll need, like I said. Um, one thing that's interesting about the out of, set, out of hospital birth center is that typically you do not stay overnight. Typically you deliver your baby and within four to eight hours you head home. And so because of that, certain things that you might be expecting me to have, I won't have. So I'm just trying to give that disclaimer so that there aren't hundreds of comments of, you really should bring this, you really should bring that. Because first of all, I will have already given birth by the time this video is live. And second of all, I trust, like I said, that my midwives who have attended literally thousands of births at the birth center, they know exactly what I need and that is how I'm packing. The other funny thing is that I'm actually, I don't, this is not actually a birth bag, it's actually a birth box, <laughs> a big clear bin and I'm gonna go through it and share with you all of the different parts of it. Now I was asked specifically during this preparing for baby class to please pack um, in plastic bags, in Ziploc bags. So that is what I did and I labeled them all because that is the way my brain works um, and that's the way that I think. Um, but I was specifically asked to do that and so what I will do is save all of these bags and with the labels on them and pack them away. I have like a pregnancy box that I'm starting to pack things away in because my pregnancy is winding down and then if we are able to conceive another child, which we would love to in the coming years, um, I will be able to pack my bags again. Um, because we 100% plan on going with the birth center again. It has been the best, most positive experience having my prenatal care with the midwives there. I just can't even explain to you. I'll have to talk more about that in another video. So I'll save all these bags with the labels and it will make packing next time even easier. So here in this birth box, <laughs> let me move it so that I it's in front of me. These are all things, like I said, that were on that list. Very specific things, what bag, what needs to be in what bag, and what needs to be labeled. There are a couple of things that I threw in here of my own volition, but mostly I'm just following instructions. So I'm just going to share with you what I have packed for our um, birth center birth, which is coming up any day now. So first of all, I brought a bunch of essential oils. The birth center has a diffuser. I really like the aromatherapy quality of essential oils, so I have a bunch of those. If you're into essential oils, you can Google um, what which ones are good for labor, but I just have like relaxing ones like lavender and things like that. These are sports bras. Now, there is a very large birthing tub in every birthing suite at the birth center. And I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I want a water birth or I'm, 
I don't know about that, but I definitely want to labor in the water. And so um, we were recommended to either pack sports bras or swim tops. So you can see that this says sports bras will be worn in place of swim tops. Now the reason that everything is labeled is because I am meant to arrive at the birth center when I'm in active labor. And um, depending on how fast and furious or slow and steady my labor progresses will depend on the vibe of the room, right? And so they want everything extremely well labeled so that my doula and my midwives can easily find things within my birth bin here um, and can grab them for me as I need them throughout labor. So um, there's that. So that's why I have will be worn in place of swim tops so people know. These I got from Amazon and I absolutely love them. They are actually nursing bras. I felt like that was a good um, investment because obviously I well, maybe not obviously, I do plan on breastfeeding and so obviously I'll be able to use these hopefully during my postpartum period if breastfeeding goes all well and good. So I have three of these um, in here because I was told that a lot of women get in and out of the water and you don't really want a wet bra on. Um, so I have three of these. I got these from Amazon. The pack was, I think, a pack of four and the fourth one I have been wearing at the end of my pregnancy and it's extremely comfortable. So I will link these below. They are from Amazon excuse me, they're from Amazon, like I said. So that's what's in that bag. The next bag, they wanted me to bring um, a change of clothes for mom, which is me, that's crazy. So mom change of labor clothes. So I just have an extra tank top, a long sleeve t-shirt, um, some shorts, some pajama pants, some socks. Again, if my labor is fast and furious and I get to the birth center and it's, you know, I'm progressing really quickly, there probably will be no changing of clothes. But if my labor is more slow and steady, then, you know, getting in and out of the tub or I might get really sweaty or I might be hot and want to change. So they just recommended that you bring just like a little sampling of very comfortable clothes that you can switch out of if you get hot or cold with those hormonal shifts and everything like that. Let's see. Okay, this is like the best thing in the entire box. This is baby going home clothes. So since this video is going up after she has already arrived, you already know our baby girl's name is Nora. So here's Nora's little going home hat with a little bow on it that I bought. I bought this from this whole outfit from Etsy, both the hat and um, this precious, precious little outfit. Oh, it's so cute. Look at it has her monogram on it. I love monograms, so I, she had to come home in something monogrammed. And I also loved that the sleeves, um, the hands flip over to be little mittens, and it's footed. So that is the baby's going home outfit, and then in this bag I also have um, little newborn socks and a diaper, which are all things that we are meant to pack. So I'm gonna fold that back up and put that back into the baby going home clothes. Like I said, best bag in this whole box. All right, let's see, moving on. This one is something that I threw in, um, mom chapstick and hair ties. I also have some toiletries, which I'll get, which I'll get into in a minute, um, but I wanted to just have a chapstick, um, a hair band, and like a hair tie on hand in the event of needing those or wanting those during labor. These are mom going home clothes, which you can see in the very front we have a lovely adult diaper <laughs> and a pad. Obviously when I am leaving the birth center, I will be bleeding. And so they recommend that we bring both of those things because it can be relatively heavy. Um, and then behind that I have like really comfy, stretchy postpartum sort of leggings that have a lot of give in the belly area and um, a nursing tank and like a pink, really soft hoodie sweatshirt type of thing um, that's actually a nursing sweatshirt so that on that first day um, I can change into those comfy things and head home and then be snuggled up in bed with my newborn baby girl. Really exciting to think about. Um, also, they wanted us to pack, this is the same sort of thing, adult diapers and overnight menstrual pads. And then I also threw in a couple of these um, cool packs that are also pads. I, My sister said that they were provided to her at her hospital and the midwife said they're a really good thing to bring as well. Um, so this kind of stuff isn't provided by the birth center, so that's why I have it and I packed it. So I actually got a huge pack of these and I have them in um, a little basket 
in our um, bathroom here at home so that when I come home I can use those because I have heard that the cooling feels very nice after um, delivering a baby. So those are in there. Next up I have baby extra change of clothes. Now I have one, um, this little onesie on the front I think is so cute and two little hair bows. This one is a newborn size and this one on the back is a zero to three month size um, and that is I don't, she is not measuring big, but um, this is in case, I don't know, something happens with the other one and and it doesn't work out and we need something else. And this one is in case she's bigger than the newborn size. I really don't think that's going to happen, but I just do as I'm told, just in case. Also newborn diapers and wipes. That's a simple, easy one. Um, this one, this is a little bit funny. So I have olive oil, perineum spray, another one of those, um, ibuprofen, and a peri bottle. And these are all for caring um, for my lady bits after and during birth. So the olive oil is for during birth, and that's something you can look into if you want to. Um, and then everything else is for after. And so those are things that were recommended to me. To bring. Um, like I said, I'm unsure how long we'll be at the birth center. We might be there if everything's going great for just a couple of hours and then we have a midwife visit the next day at, at home. She'll come to our home and check up on us and do, um, you know, the same sort, run the same sorts of tests and things like that that will be done post birth again the next day and then we'll check in. We check in quite a lot. It's really, um, I just love, I just love it. Um, these are all, this is dad change of clothes and swim trunks. So these are all for my husband, Riley. Um, depending, again, how long my labor is, he might want to change into fresh clothes. So I have like a fleece in here for him, um, shorts and a t-shirt or pants, I forget what he chose, and then swim trunks. Um, he is not planning and I am not planning on him getting into the birthing tub with me, but the midwives were funny. They were like, you say you don't want him in there now, but if in labor you want him in there, he will do whatever you say. <laughs> you're in the middle of labor. So we packed it because we were told to, even though that's definitely not part of our plan. Um, receiving blankets for the baby, we were told to bring a heavier one and a lighter one, um, which is a good idea for Texas because here we are in mid-October and um, it's like 88 degrees right now, extremely humid, very warm, feels like summer, and a few days ago it got down to 30 degrees. So we have no clue whatsoever how warm or cold it will be on the day that she's born. So we have blankets of all different weights. In this bag, I have a robe and a nightgown. So this robe matches with one of the receiving blankets, so I'd love to get a picture. This is from, I believe, Milk Made Goods. I think that's the name of the company. It was a gift from my mom. Um, and so I wanna get a picture of me wearing this robe with her swaddled in the um, matching swaddle. I think that'd be really cute. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the birth center. It can be at home later. Um, and then this is a one of those they're called modern house dresses. You might have seen an ad. Um, this one's from Nesting Olive. You might have seen an ad for these on Instagram or Facebook. I did. That's how I found them. Um, and they're basically like, it's like a big, more modern looking moo, moo is basically what it is. And so it's this very flowy, long, black dress. It has pockets and it has buttons so it's nursing friendly. Um, and the idea is that it's just really easy to be in when in those early days when you're nursing all the time and um, you just need something very extremely comfortable. So that is that. Let me move these things out of the way. The last two things I have are a bunch of paperwork in here. This is like critical paperwork information, things that we've filled out. Um, in the event of a hospital transfer, I have all of my records in here. I have um, just a variety of things like that. So super important information. So I got this um, really cool little, I don't know, little sleeve looking thing to put all of that in. The last thing are labor snacks for mom. So these are things for me to 
try to eat while I'm in labor. Well, from my understanding and from the preparing for baby class that we took, talking about packing these things, a lot of these things will be consumed probably in early labor and even maybe in early active labor, but evidently most women are not hungry at all and are not able to eat in later stages of labor, you know, in pushing the end of active labor and into transition, apparently people are not trying to eat. So I have like, go, go. So I went on the Facebook group for our birth center and asked what kinds of snacks women were able to tolerate during labor. And most people said squeeze pouches of applesauce. Um, that was the overwhelming response was that that was a really, really good, um, a really good snack because it's super easy to eat and it gives you a little boost of energy. Some people said peanut butter crackers, so I have some peanut butter crackers in here. A lot of women said Jolly Ranchers just for like little shots of sugar and um, to have sort of a flavor in your mouth. And a lot of women said that if they were nauseous during labor that Jolly Ranchers helped, so I got a bag of those. I also have some fruit leathers. I have a Luna Bar just a variety of different things um, that I can try to eat. And then I have this basket over here that is um, more um, drinks and things that I'm bringing with me to the birth center. So this is everything in my birth center bin. Um, they don't require that it's in a clear plastic bin, but I had packed it. I had just started pulling together all these different bags that were requested on our packing list um, and put them in here. And I thought I would move them into a bag once I was finished or a suitcase or something. And my doula was talking to me and she was like, I would just leave it in the bin. She's like, that makes it super easy because it's clear and we can find everything. So this bin is going right up in the back of our car um, so that it's ready to go whenever we are heading to the birth center. So that's everything that's in my in my um, birth center bag. I do have a few other things I'll show you here. And then on the back of the, um, on the top of the bin, I've taped um, a piece of paper and have written down a few things that need to we need to remember when we're heading to the birth center. So things like packing our phone chargers. My husband needs to make sure to bring his glasses and his contacts and solution. Um, we need to make sure we like let our dog out and call my mother-in-law because she's going to come get him. A variety of things like that. So just those last minute reminders I put right here on the lid um, so that Riley is able to go through those and check those off when we're on the way to have our baby girl. Crazy. Um, it's really weird filming this while I'm still pregnant because I'm talking about all these things knowing that this is going to go up after she's here and knowing that oh my goodness it could be any day. So I have three different like bags that I'm taking to the birth center. So I have all these bags over here that I need to organize and put back into that box. And then I have this bag and then I have um, this little basket and this is of drinks and um, mostly drinks. So in this blue bag here, this is, um, all this has in it right now is my hairbrush, but I will put my um, makeup in here. I don't know what that's going to look like. I plan, I'm, I'm assuming perhaps after the birth, I may want like a little bit of concealer and just like a little freshen up. I know a lot of moms do, but I might not care at all. I don't know, but I'm just going to bring like the bare basics of my makeup in there. It's empty right now, um, but that's something that as things start ramping up in my body, I'll go ahead and pop my makeup in there. The other thing is, these are all my toiletries um, just rolled up here. So like Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, toiletries, you know what those are. So those two things are going in here, and then Riley will also put his contact solution and um, things like that in there. So that's that little bag. Um, and then in here, this basket, this is heavy because it has drinks in it. So we were asked to bring on our little packing list um, a few different types of things. So one thing is um, a nice big cup to drink from with a bendy straw um, so that it's easy to drink in any position that we are laboring. I keep saying we, I'm thinking like me and the other moms at our birth center, um, but that I'm laboring in, this will be easy to drink out of. So I purchased this off Amazon. I can link it below. I'll try to link what I'm able to link below. <clears throat> And I really love, um, it's this Bubba brand, and I really like it because I like that it has a handle, and I like that it's like extra large. I mean, you can see compared to my head, it's pretty big, and um, that the straw is bendy. I purchased it about a month ago, and I've been saving it. So I'm going to save it until 
it's time um, just so that it's it's like gonna be my labor and nursing water bottle or juice bottle or whatever then in here I just have um, a variety of different beverages that were recommended to me to bring with me now of course I can just do water but I also brought this is coconut water and watermelon I'm not a big fan of coconut water <clears throat> but it's extremely hydrating and has a lot of great electrolytes in it so we'll see maybe in labor we'll see with the watermelon it tastes better I'm, I, I don't like crave it but I, I can do it um, these body armors have coconut water in them and they are a lot more palatable to me I like them a lot so this one is orange mango fruit punch and tropical punch so I have three of those as well I'm not planning on drinking all of this of course not I'm giving myself options because I can be a little bit particular especially like if I'm in an intense situation like I don't know giving birth I know that I'm going to be particular about what I will and won't eat or drink and so I'm giving myself options and I'm also going by the list these are the things that we were told to bring coconut water so I just brought a few different types of coconut water two kinds of juices um, and a big water bottle so the two kinds of juices I, I got apple juice um, and I tried to get like natural organic and and um, grape juice instead of you know from concentrate just so that I felt like that I don't know I felt like that was a better plan since it's birth and there's a baby involved and these kinds of things so those are all the drinks and then I just have snacks in here for um, Riley for my doula like things like that so I have like almonds and trail mix and, and peanut butter more peanut butter crackers things like that so I'm not going to go through all that because it doesn't really matter and then one of the things that was funny I thought on our packing list was to bring a little bag for the dad that has like a toothbrush and a mouthwash and mints in it um, because <clears throat> Uh, apparently one of the the times in labor when women get the most snappy is when their husbands have bad breath and they're like in their face trying to encourage them and they like smell bad and I could totally see myself being like ah you, your breath smells bad so um, this was recommended for us to pack which I think is really funny so like I said toothbrush and toothpaste mouthwash and little mints um, because Riley will bring I'm sure he will be drinking lots of coffee while we're there we'll have access our birthing suite comes with a full kitchen and so he is going to bring we already have it in the fridge like a whole thing of cold brew which is his definite drink of choice um, which is coffee and so that's totally fine I want him to have whatever he needs to have to be able to stay awake and then there's all these snacks in here that he can eat as well um, but I can imagine that coffee breath when I'm like pushing mm, that might not go great so it's good I think that was a really that was a funny idea um, but a really good one on the list so that is everything that I am bringing with me to my out of hospital birth center birth again I know that some of these things are untraditional if you are used to a hospital environment so um, you may be thinking why would you bring snacks you can't eat or why would you bring juice they already provide that but it's just different um, at a birth center there this the way that the model of care goes is just really different and so um, in some ways there are there are pros and cons to everything in life and so there are some really awesome pros to delivering at a hospital and there are some cons and there are some really awesome pros to delivering at a birth center and there are some cons as well um, as I said earlier this has been the most fantastic uh, my prenatal care through our birth center has been absolutely amazing I just can't even tell you every single appointment is one hour long and I get to sit with a provider who I trust and love and know and talk to a my midwives and we just go over everything and I just feel so safe and comfortable with them I'm just really really looking forward to the birthing experience because I know I'm going to be surrounded by women who I love and trust and who I know who I've spent hours and hours and hours with over the past nine or ten months of my pregnancy so anyway that's the story that's what we're bringing to the birth center if you have had a birth center birth or um, if you are planning on a birth center birth I would love to hear about your experience in the comments below I am sure that Nora's birth story will be coming up on this channel sometime soon because I know I want to film that for sure and I can't wait to share with you I just know it's going to be such an amazing experience and I really look forward to being able to share that journey with you and share her little cute face with you and everything so that's what I'm packing. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.